Why did you need it? Can I stop? It's your start, Fred. You're the guy. Thanks so much for the award. If you live long enough, you find things gain to reverse themselves. <laughs> Mike, can you hear me? Closer to your face. Yeah. After spending a lifetime handing out awards, you end up getting a few yourself. I'm not sure I know which of these I prefer. Be that as it may, if not for the fact that we were We were destined to live in a particularly violent era in the past 70 years. I can't say I didn't have a wonderful time working with so many gifted and wonderful people who made our world again with a cultural revolution that changed the way we see ourselves and the world in which we live. For, this, for me, this has been a supreme adventure an adventure made all the more exciting by, by the fact that it was made in the close company of my f friend and boss, Barney Rossett, who helped shape this extraordinary period with his own unique vision, gave us a, few, a new freedom with which to embrace our new world coming to life in a new millennium. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And, uh, you're coming up here. The, uh, this is this this is an actual acker. If you wonder what it looks like, that's what it looks like. You get one, and you also get the poster and the box. And your son is going to make sure that everything else happens. Fred Jordan was vice president and editor in chief at Grove Press, where he worked for more than three decades, starting in 1956. Managing editor of the company's magazine, The Evergreen Review. Among the authors he worked with. Sam Beckett, personal friend of mine, Jack Kerouac, William Burroughs, Allen Ginsberg, Pablo Neruda, Vaclav Havel, Alain Robrier, Marguerite Duras, Harold Pinter, Eugenie Ionesco, Tom Stoppard, Abby Hoffman, David Dillinger, Alan Lomax, David Mamet, Monty Python, William Fullman, Art Spiegelman, Alan Hoffman, and Kathy Hunter. Thank you so much. All right, actually, he got the uh, editor in chief uh, award. We have a little. Uh, Communication issue with Ken, but that's uh, why he got it. That's why he's here. It wasn't arbitrary, and we're very honored to have him here. And the other person is Barney Rossett. Uh, Barney Rossett, born in Chicago, 1922, single corps during World War II, in charge of a photographic unit in China, produced a feature film, Strange Victory in 48. In 51, he bought Grove Press. In the 50s, he published T.H. Lawrence's Lady Chatterley's Lover and Henry Miller's Tropic of Cancer, defending these books and others in court. Attacked. Over the years, Grove took on hundreds of lawsuits in the process of expanding the range of free expression and public discourse. Grove produced the magazine Evergreen Review. Ross continued the company for 14 years before selling it in 85. Indeed, many Grove writers who were considered iconoclasts in their day are now regarded as central figures in our own culture. And we just heard their names earlier. So to Barney Ross and Fred Jordan, who really allowed the First Amendment freedom of speech lives on because these guys went to went to court to fight for it. So yeah, that's that where art is when you got it in your soul, right? And Astrid is here uh, to accept the award. Astrid uh, with Evergreen uh, Review. Evergreen Review is back. And it's, uh, here we go. Here's Astrid. Thank you. Uh, by Valerie Oistiano, who had the law. Valerie's not used to this position. <laughs> Just a big, big thank you. I know I am thrilled to receive this. <clears throat> very honored. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, 